you will participate as a funded student for this scholarship that we are going to be talking about today you are not required to pay any participation cost okay and also your health insurance the university registration and student service are uh, student service are covered uh, in this uh, scholarship offer so you want to make sure you sit back you watch this video to the very end to have better understanding of all the steps you need to follow the documents the eligibility requirement and every information that needs to be followed in today's uh, scholarship video. The first round application is going to end in uh, 13 days from now. So you want to make sure you actually go ahead and quickly submit your application because the application already started from the 1st of February and is going to end at this particular date. Okay? As if you want to apply for the second round of admission. And if you apply for this first round of application, then the selection process is going to start in April. So this is the break breakdown. The selection process is going to start by April 30th and the enrollment is going to also start uh, after this uh, first selection process. Okay. So you need to make sure you follow every information that I will be sharing with you in today's video. Now let's quickly look at the entry requirements. Okay. So for someone who wants to apply to this scholarship, you need to understand that this is a master degree scholarship offer for you today and you need to actually have your bachelor degree uh, ready with you okay that is recognized by uh, this uh, university that we are going to be looking at today and if you look at this section it says a bachelor degree from a recognized academic higher institution okay that is equivalent uh, to an European uh, undergraduate degree of 180 uh, credit okay in a field related to the program area with background both biology and chemistry okay so there are some field of area that you can apply to if you are going to be applying to this uh scholarship today okay and the average grade of the previous study should should prove high qualification of the applicant you are also required to provide documentation of a finalized first degree by the deadline of application, which is your transcript with your final grade uh, that indicates your uh, your final grade and uh, which is your total CGPA. Okay, so a final degree diploma must be present by the time of en uh, enrollment. That is after the selection uh, the selection process uh, has ended and you want to start your enrollment uh, process. Okay, so. If you look down here, you actually need to provide your English proficiency using either of this method, okay? And the proof of English proficiency documented by international recognized certification using any of this option is actually accepted and the certificate is not considered valid when it's older than five years uh, from the time you actually took this, okay? These are only tests accepted as proof of English proficiency and any other type of certification is not considered as valid proof of uh, proficiency. Okay, so you also need to pay attention to this. Okay, and actually, there are some people that are not even required to provide any evidence of English proficiency. So, if you want to see that list, you actually need to click on this link right here. Okay, so if you are from the United Kingdom, United States, Virgin Island, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Tobago, Trinidad, Uganda, okay, and uh, South Africa, Nigeria, okay, I think I found Ghana there, Ghana, uh, Dominica, VG, and this country right here, uh, Barbuda, Belize, okay, uh, Bermuda, uh, Botswana, Canada, Bangladesh, uh, Barbados, Bama, uh, Bahamas, Australia, Antigua, Bahrain, you are not required to provide any uh, uh, English proficiency because you are already uh, classified as native English speaker. Okay, and uh, for candidates who have completed an entire degree program that is taught in English, okay, and uh, listed above, the proof of English proficiency is also with okay, study period of different lengths not leading to a degree uh, entirely head in English do not count as sufficient demonstration. Okay, so let's quickly let's leave that and come to the application procedure before we go to the document required. Quick, okay, because you actually need to fill the declaration form. So I will show you how to fill the declaration form. You just need to uh, download it, print it, then uh, uh, check it. Okay, so when we get there, we're actually going to be looking at that. The application process is organized by the university. So this particular university is one of the university in Italy. 
So uh, an all required document must be submitted directly uh, through the university website. Okay, so the application and selection process has two rounds. Okay, so the first round is the one that we are talking about right now. Okay, and uh, you actually need to uh, pay attention so that you have proper uh, understanding. The first round will be uh, will be a first round that will select the scholarship order and the non-fee paying self-funded applicant, which we open and close in February every year. Okay, so which means if you are not unable to apply for February this year, you can still apply for February next year, but they have another run for May this year. Okay, so and the application stage you need to indicate that uh indicate if you are applying for a place with scholarship and or a non-fee paying uh funded place. So I believe you want to indicate that you are applying for a place with scholarship. Okay, so please don't miss that. That is why I'm trying to make sure I read uh, some of the important information for you right here. Okay, so while there is no formal restriction in the number of applicants, a student must, uh, might submit we generally recommend to potential applicants to choose carefully the master courses on the basis of precondition. Okay, so critical described on the uh, website and the second round for fee paying student applicants will open and close in May every year. So this is majorly for fee paying students. So if you want to get the scholarship, it is advisable that you struggle and um, uh, try all your best to actually make sure that you submit your application by February. So I don't know when you'll be coming across this video. Whenever you come across this video and this is still open, you want to try as much as you can. But if not, uh, you can then apply next year. Okay. So for the declaration uh, form, you can see the declaration form right here. So let's open this declaration form so that I'll show you what you actually need to do on the form. When you click on that declaration form and you download the declaration form file to your phone, you want to make sure that you print it out so that you can fill all this information. And if you can use some online tools to actually uh, fill in the information, you just need to provide your surname, which is the family name, then your first name, your date of birth, your place of birth, your citizenship, your country of residence. Then if you scroll down, here it says you need to provide your address, then you now start providing information about your first degree. So if you scroll down, you see first degree, mark of first degree, second degree, mark of second degree, okay? And if you scroll down, you need to actually check this box six, okay? So if you've already applied to Erasmus Mondo Joint Master Scholarship, uh, you cannot uh, apply for this, okay? So I'm just giving you an int, an int, okay? For a place with Erasmus Scholarship, I confirm that I have not benefited from the Erasmus Mondo Joint Master Scholarship in any previous education. So you actually need to tick the box if yes or no. And if you have actually applied for Erasmus Mondo and you've gotten it in any uh, university before, you cannot apply for this. Okay. So uh, that is that. And the second option is the non-fee paying student. So there are two different options right here. So please don't do mistake. Okay. So I declare that I will not require visa to study. So as an international student, you have to click on this. So I will be using Nigeria as a case study. Okay, so I will require a visa to study in Europe and I will be responsible for meeting the visa requirements for Italy. Okay, so you check this box actually. So one thing that is also important is that this is actually coming from three countries, Italy, uh, Belgium, and I think Spain is the third one or so. We are, we are going back to the website to see uh, the third country so that uh, you know that this is also like a, a joint master program actually. That is, but it's majorly uh, ushered by uh, that university in Italy. Okay, so you check this box. So you see that checkbox there. Okay, then you also confirm this. I de this declaration. You also confirm it. Then you come to the bottom right here. Then you append your signature right here, the signature and the date. So this is why I said it is better that you actually print it out so that you can print. Uh, you can. Uh, indicate your signature on it okay so i think this is it here spain belgium i will therefore choose a mobility track that is eligible to according uh to eligible according to this rule for instance italian students cannot do the internship in italy in the first semester nor in the same country okay i think it's spain the third one is spain italy spain and belgium okay so i, I think i get it right Okay, so let's go back to the website then uh, so that I will show you what to do with this uh, declaration form. Let's go back now. 
so the the first document that is needed for you is the uh, declaration form so i've shown you how to fit that then you need your curriculum vitae so uh, it's important that you make sure that it's written in english okay and all your qualification experience and skill is well detailed and uh uh input on the curriculum vitae then your university degree diploma is also important so and by the time of the final uh, process which is the enrollment process you need to have a copy of your transcript ready so i don't want to read everything let me just summarize for you okay so academic record is also uh, important information to look out right there so i've summarized the uh, university degree and the academic record together okay then english proficiency we've actually looked at that together so if you are planning to submit or attach your English proficiency if you are not from any of the country we mentioned above or we mentioned uh, before that we saw at the top then you need to scan your report sheet and upload it that's for the English proficiency okay so your international passport should be ready by this time and then you need the motivation letter okay that is not that is not more than 750 word then also a reference letter is also important okay so you just need to make sure you follow every instruction that you can find here okay and if your admission application is not complete then you will not be able to actually be eligible okay only complete application that met all the requirements will be considered eligible and will be assessed okay so if all your documents are missing or if any of the documents are missing then you will not be able to get to the uh, selection stage and you need to avoid waiting for the last minute to uh, actually submit your uh, application i always say this make sure you file your application as soon as you come across any information video just like this one okay so don't wait for the deadline start your application immediately and uh just make sure you just start your application as at the time you are starting your application then you can start uh looking for other documents okay while you are doing that application okay and once you submit your online form you will not be able to make any changes so you want to make sure you cross check every information before you submit uh your application okay and after this you are going to get a confirmation email that verify that you've actually provided all the documents require your transcript uh your uh your proficiency information your uh document your uh program that you want to apply to you've actually uh selected the right uh program so after this after submitting the application i i told you the first thing is the application the second stage is the selection process then the third stage is the uh, enrollment process so uh, uh, in the past i've made a video about pre-enrollment on university italy because the uh, the host country of this uh, scholarship is italy so you need to make sure that you do your pre-enrollment on the university italy as well okay in summary of the selection process what you need to do is still boil down to your document because i always say this if you are going to be getting a funded offer or uh, a scholarship let me put it a scholarship all your documents are important and if you look at if you read the information that you can find here your application will be evaluated based on your academic record the merit your motivation letter the reference uh, letter those are the major things that will be evaluated for your application and if your application is evaluated and uh, you are being selected you will have to do like a zoom uh, interview that will last for just 30 minutes okay so you i will make sure i drop all this link at the description of this video so that you can also come back to digest this information i'm just trying to summarize so that the video is not too long for you to actually understand so they will do uh like an online uh i don't know if they will use team or if they will use zoom or google meet but most time they always use uh microsoft team okay so if they invite you this will last for 30 minutes just to make sure or uh, just random question about your motivation and why you are selecting that program so it's still uh, asking what motivated you to apply for this and if you are successful and you are being selected uh the number of students that will be allocated this scholarship uh, is limited and if the first list is full they are going to generate the second list which is the reserve list and you will be notified if you are in the first major list or you are being uh, put in the reserve list okay so you also need to make sure you keep checking your email for any other important 
information about the selection process and if you are not selected you can actually submit an appeal okay by sending email to this uh uh email right here so you can just read through that to get more information about that now let's go back to the pre-enrollment uh, information so for the pre-enrollment information right here if you scroll down a little more bit you are going to see that you actually need to do your pre-enrollment through the university tally so all of this process i've actually uh showed you in the past and this we actually uh pre-enrollment always starts may june every year so you want to make sure so this is majorly why uh the application process is ending by february so that they can do all the selection process by uh maybe uh may then you can start your pre enrollment letters uh by end of may to june okay so this is every information you need to understand about this particular scholarship so make sure that you have your declaration of value your transcript of record your diploma and in translation your international passport and every other information okay so if you want to get your uh, visca uh, visca code i've actually shown you in my university video so i think i will drop that video at the description of this video so that you can also go back to watch to be able to generate your visca code as described in your admission letter okay so this will be everything i need to show you or uh, pre package fill out your form so they are just giving you a brief overview of what you need to do, but it will not be as if you're watching step by step how to do this. Okay, so this will be all I have to share with you in this video. I hope this is helpful enough to guide you to make decision if you want to apply to the emotion uh, scholarship. Okay, so this is actually funded by uh, this school in Italy. So if you see the name of this school here, the University of Piemonte Oriental okay so if you want to start now then you need to go to this link to start the process okay so this will be everything that you need to do if you want to reach out to me for any support make sure you do that send me email let's get something done and i or oh, i wish you success in everything that you do bye bye